Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, which is kind of a theory as well as a piano instruction, so do get your pianos out and your books out, both will be helpful. We are going to look beyond triads, but without really adding new notes to the party. We are still going to take the same old three notes, which make a chord or a triad as we know them. A triad is known as a three note chord. So we take the same notes to build the three note structure so hopefully there will be a few things you did not know about triads or maybe if you already knew them this would still be a lot of fun so do watch till the very end that will be awesome so first off let's just look at normal triads how we form them major triads C major for instance C G that we are not going to talk about in this lesson minor triad C E flat G then we have our diminished triads C, E flat, G flat. Then we have our augmented triads. C, E, G sharp. And then we have our suspensions. Sus4. Sus2. And that's pretty much it, right? So assuming we know that, I'm still going to dive a bit deeper in this lesson. So before we get started, it'll be nice if you could consider hitting that bell icon and turn on the subscribe if you're a regular viewer of our channel. If you're not, do follow through till the end or somewhere towards the end. And if you like the lesson, do Give us a thumbs up, do hit the subscribe and also leave us a comment with what you thought about the lesson. And the notes for this lesson will be available on our Patreon page forward slash Jason Zach. And for just $5 a month as your subscription, you'll get access to my handwritten notes, backing tracks wherever applicable in our lessons, staff notation, MIDI files and the works. So do consider heading over to patreon.com and check out the perks there. Let's get cracking. So the first thing about a triad you might not have known is the fact that we can take a good old chord like C major, like this one, and change the bass note of this chord. And whenever we change the bass note of a chord, we call it a slash chord. So you take C major in your right hand. This is a good way to start. And the traditional way of playing it would be with a C bass but with a slash chord concept you're going to find other bass notes and a good way to find the other bass notes would be from the triad itself. C major has three notes C, E, G. What are the remaining notes? E and G. E is the third and G is the fifth. So you now end up playing C, E, G with a E in the bass or C major with a G in the bass and this is, is very useful in music because if I play C triad with an E bass, even though I have not added a note, I have changed the function or I have changed the purpose of the chord to not be stable anymore. It's a rather unstable entity, right? It wants to go somewhere else. While if you play C major just with C in the bass, it's happy where it is. So C major slash E or C slash E, by the way, where does it want to go? It would like to go to F major or, or maybe even an F minor, which will be played in their normal root position. So C slash E going to F slash F. And then C slash G seems to again feel tense. And this would like to go to the G major, which is the dominant of C major. So C, C slash G going to G major. So C slash E wants to go to F. C slash G wants to go to G. Okay. Of course, that resolves back to C slash C, which is just C major. Okay, so that's the slash chord concept. A lot more on slash chords. You can check out some of our videos, which we leave you in the description. We've spent a lot of time on slash chords on our channel. The other kind of way you can 
make triads a lot more interesting for the year would be to spread out the chord a bit more this can be very useful when you are orchestrating music when you are arranging music with sounds other than the piano maybe a string orchestra or a an entire ensemble with horns and wind instruments and what not you want to spread out the instruments or the notes as much as you can and the piano method of spreading out stuff frankly doesn't spread much because the third is very close and as you go deeper it sounds really bad so a good functional use on the piano when you want to play deep stuff is by spreading your chord so in this case i've taken the c major chord c and instead of playing e in the middle i'm playing e at the top so this is how i play my chords in the left hand do not ever play your chords in the left hand like this especially so low it's absolutely useless so this is how you want to play it now if you cannot stretch you can always hit the last note with your right hand and then use the other fingers with a melody there are a lot of ways to do that uh, or if you cannot stretch exactly this way then it's okay you can still hold down your pedal and play it as an arpeggio so spread chords sound beautiful go there we go that's b flat in there e flat in there f minor f sharp major and so on these are some slash chords and when you go from chord to chord or still try it to try it i still am playing three notes per chord as i promised you in the lesson d major g minor and the beauty of spread chords is when you play them with different bass notes call this a g minor with a d bass adds a lot of weight to the sound da, 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 da. or da, 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 de, da, da, da. as you see i'm playing spread chords primarily in my left hand in this uh, illustration but you can do it even in your right hand or you could have a combination of the right hand as well as the left hand so spread chords and slash chords are really exciting ways to bring life to the triads and use them in different ways slash chords change the energy state of the chord while spread chords allow you to perform the chord with many instrumentalists like an orchestra or a string quartet or even a choir and even on the piano and the bass clef since the frequencies can tend to collide we can play it effortlessly without any kind of jarring or muddy kind of sound you won't have a sound engineer go and eq eq you out so to speak okay guys so the next style of forming triads if you will would be to not form it the traditional way using thirds the normal way to form tri triads is 1 3 5 but another nice strategy would be you can form it with fours and if you take perfect fourths for for instance c you ask yourself what is c's perfect fourth that would be f c f and then another perfect fourth if you uh, grow forward c f b flat that's what we call as a quartal chord and there are many kinds of quartal chords in music you have a normal c quartal chord whose formula would be in terms of uh, scale degrees or chord degrees 1 4 7 flat then you have another kind of quartal chord which will be 1 4 okay that will be we notate it sometimes with a q plus symbol okay and then we have a this sort of a quartal which is a bit lydian or very very dreamy in nature if you ask me because it has the sharp 4 or the tritone so we call that sharp 4q 1 so 4 sharp and then a major 7th up top so normal quartal q plus quartal plus or the lydian quartal or the sharp 4q 
Okay, mm. now quartal chords are great to to kind of add within the same chord itself. So if you're on C, you can kind of keep the C going in your bass, but you can float around with these quartal chords. So very useful chord. Again, we leave a couple of videos in the description where we've dived into the concept of quartal chords even more. And another chord which I find very useful, especially in my well, both hands actually, but more in the left hand will be quintal chords. So a quintal chord would be where you form a chord with fifths. Again, we are going beyond the thirds notion, which is the traditional triad formation, right? Which is that. So quintal chords would be in fifths and you can use it really well in the left hand, like for rhythm like that or for chords like this. So you, you may have a G major going on in the band but you could voice it with this quintal sound so what is a quintal chord it's a root perfect five and then another perfect five or another fifth along with the fifth so it's two fifths played together quint quintal five right so this could imply a major chord or it could even imply a minor chord. So in your band, if someone's playing, let's say in this case, a G minor, that would work. It would be like a minor add nine kind of a sound. Or if the band is playing a G major, you can kind of con continue to play this. And we have a lot of strategies where you can combine the quintal sound with an octave, vanilla octave, and the spread third which I showed you where you play it up top we also call it a tenth that's your nine your eight also known as octave and then you have your tenth up top so stuff like this makes for a very dynamic left hand pattern where you float the top note but retain the root and fifth in the bottom Okay, that's your quintal voicing. Great for piano intros if you're doing things in your right hand as well, you know, like... Just doing stuff like, say, let's say I take C quintal. And A quintal. Maybe F now. G. want to also stretch out practice a bit of stretching exercises and don't overdo this for too long on the piano because it will stretch your hand a bit more so you may need to be warmed up so if you don't warm up very regularly and you want to play these bigger uh, bigger stretch chords you need to warm up before you play so do a few warm-up drills uh, I've done a few exercises on posture, so do watch some of those videos as well on your channel. And if you're a first-time viewer to our channel, please note that there are a lot of lessons you'd find on our channel homepage. You can access the videos by topic. You can also access them as playlists, or you can head over to our website, nathanielschool.com, and under the video courses area or under the free tutorials area, you can get a very structured learning system in place for you to learn. So let's move forward. The next strategy for voicing or to play triads in way in a way you might not know or in a way which is not officially printed in music theory textbooks. I think that's what this is about is you take a fifth chord. A fifth chord would be a root, a fifth and the octave on top. So that would be root, fifth, octave and this is a root perfect fifth and the perfect octave now you could play that chord either in root position d a d or in inversion which is a d a depending on the reach depending on the sound or the vibe you want and in the left hand here's the thing remember i'm not going more than three notes in this lesson it's still chords with just three notes so you would copy the d you would copy the A. So if you play a D, it automatically reinforces the D fifth sound. 
if you play an a makes it a very suspended sound a very a sus4 sound but why not try some other notes like a b flat wow now what was that it's this to me sounds like way more than three notes but actually it's still just three notes we're just taking d a d right hand never changed and i'm adding that b flat so it's the bass note which kind of dictates terms to the overall sound of the chord or the overall emotion so if i play d it's a plain and simple chord but b flat because of the intervals it forms on top it forms the major third forms the major seventh so you could argue it's some kind of a major seventh chord b flat major seventh without the f which we can sneak in later so you can explore your your chords your three note structures this way by just seeing what you like you know what goes well with that fifth chord so if you take d you know that's very dry and normal a is also okay because it's part of the chord so you're not adding the third note but if you do g wow that creates a nice g sus4 vibe right g sus4 or e making another nice suspended vibe with a minor 7th f that's a nice deep thick kind of sound f major 6th vibe that's b that's c forming a nice c sus very suspended sounds and also you get those additional minor 7th and major 7th intervals and f sharp works a flat or g sharp is okay B flat is probably my favorite. Now B is my new favorite. See, oh wow, everything seems to sound good. So that's what I want you to explore. So even if you're diatonic to the key of, let's say D, you know, D has uh, two sharps, namely F sharp and C sharp. So even if you're diatonic to the key of D, you can build some very nice harmonic motion or chord progressions, if you will, by just focusing on your left hand and making sure the right hand just stays playing a fifth chord so you can make music maybe like this b da na d da na na d da na na d g look at my right hand it's just there g da na 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 b minor da na 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 d major na 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 a La da 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 G. La da 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 da. F sharp. Na 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 na. A. Na 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 na. Quite a pop progression. Na 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 da 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 da. B. So it's some kind of B minor. G. D. But in a way, I can argue that. This is a sound which is not very commonly heard because most piano players who learn in the textbook way will just stick with triads but this is the same chord but it just opens out new possibilities i guess right so explore fifth chords again i leave a few videos regarding fifth chord exercises which will help you grasp the concept better in the description check those out and a couple more ways to use triads which i think you should definitely know and use in your music what about bigger jazzier seventh chords and other jazz tensions you know those structures we can do that with just three notes so a good voicing strategy which i have for you would be play the root of any of the chords you wish to do let's say you want to form an f major 7th so you play tell yourself okay i'll play the root note in my left hand that's f now the major 7th will contain 1 the 3rd the 5th and the 7th you can say bye bye to the 5th you don't need the 5th actually because the 5th doesn't make the sound obviously that chord unless of course it's a diminished chord or a minor 7th flat 5 those chords need a diminished 5th or a it could even be an augmented 5th which is needed but for chords which just need a perfect 5th like an f major 7th or a minor 7th or a dominant 7th or you know a minor 7th uh, a, a minor major 7th all of these chords you can kind of remove off the 5th so i could do f 
mm. and i could tell myself okay what are the remaining notes of the chord f major 7th so that will be the third and the 7th what is the third of f major a what is the 7th of f major e so whack that all together these three notes i had an octave for reinforcement it's a nice way to play f major 7th and in the due course you can also add a c that closes the the puzzle but this is a nice sound and what i like about just playing the 3rd and the 7th is you can then play it lower as well with that f with that root and i think again it's a very open it's a very open sound and it sounds good in all parts of the keyboard there so basically you either do 3rd 7th or you do 7th and 3rd now if you apply this concept to maybe a dominant 7th chord same concept you do 3rd 7th flat because a dominant 7th has a 7th flat and if you want to revoice that play it lower that would be 7th flat with the 3 it's a nice voicing little tritone in there actually then if you're doing a minor 7th chord and then if you do a you know that's a minor 7th with a flat 3 and a flat 7 if you do a 2 5 1 you can move very smoothly f minor 7th for you b flat dominant 7th e flat major 7th it, it's just one note changes right f minor 7th which is a flat and e flat then b flat dominant 7th which is just keeping that a flat coming down to d and then e flat major 7th you just drop that a flat down to g so again oh b flat e flat which is your 2 5 1 one more time 2 5 1 still using just three notes so i have one more interesting strategy with just three note chords for you before we sign off and that is a modal use of triads or three note chords so what you do is you want to get yourself a chord you want to get yourself a set of notes a set of three notes in this particular tutorial to highlight or to give your fellow musicians or your audience what the mode is about or what mode are you on a mode is basically a scale in this context let's just call it a scale so if you want to let's say showcase i'll just show you a few modes in this lesson if you want to showcase the lydian scale or the lydian mode to someone because it's rather different from major lydian is has a sharp 4 in there so if you want to give people a chord which inspires them to to be on the world of lydian you could just ask yourself which are how do i just get three notes into play so that i get the most important uh, ingredients of the lydian out and the most important ingredients of the lydian would be the sharp 4 for sure because that's what differentiates it from the major scale that's major that's lydian so a good lydian chord would be what i call as the simpson's chord that one so c e f sharp so that's just three notes and it could be a very nice modal chord you can also do c f sharp b that would also be a very nice lydian sound or you can even do c g b little more timid or c f sharp g all these could spell out the lydian and then what else let's look at another mode what if you wanted a phrygian chord which is a minor scale with a flat 2 or a major scale with a flat 2 flat 3 flat 6 flat 7 that one that's c phrygian so what's a good way to give someone the idea that you are on the phrygian oh yes totally that and that's one two flat four perfect fourth or you could even do basically anything with a two flat would do c d flat a flat or you could also do that 
slightly timid but you're not implying the two flat but it kind of works that works and yeah that's phrygian so phrygian lydian and then if you want something very mixolydian i think this would work very well for me this can even be dorian so that would be 1 4 7 flat kind of the quartal chord which i explained earlier or or you can do c e b flat can you even do a c sus 4 but i like this for mixolydian or even dorian this is also a nice dorian chord dorian would be flat 3 normal 6 and flat 7 so this is a decent enough dorian chord right guys so let's just recap so th these may be a few things about three note chords which you may not have found in a traditional music textbook i have a few as well so when you research these books it's always going to show you diatonic chord theory that's the triads that's you know this 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 c e g but in the real world a lot of the professional musicians even pr the pros who play pop songs or country songs not jazz at all just normal music don't play chords this way and if you are a keyboard learner and not a piano learner per se if you consider yourself a keyboardist generally what happens with keyboards is in the left side of your instrument you end up having these auto chord buttons you just have to hold c and sometimes you have to hold literally a shape which will not work in the real world but because that keyboard instrument is made that way your entire career will be to play chords that way which is never going to allow your left hand to grow so hopefully this lesson gives you some insights into what the left hand can actually do or what the left hand should not do the left hand definitely should not play triads like that you know so try to think beyond the box and these five methods were what i thought was a bit beyond the traditional box which is how you would normally learn piano from a textbook or from a normal syllabus and this is what is found in actual song so we looked at slash and spread chords slash chords with a different bass spread chords where you take the third and push it outside the octave it's over the octave chords then we looked at quartal and quintal voicing quartal voicing in fours quintal in fives very useful for a lot of things as we saw then you take a fifth chord in the right hand and stack it up with different notes the uh, different note rather in the left hand to give you a very big rich sound then we looked at voicing of seventh chords where you take the root of the seventh chord and in the right hand you look at either the third or the seventh to play you can do 3 7 or you can do 7 3 and last but not least we looked at modal chords where you you just spell out a mode you bring out the vibe of a mode by finding the notes or the notes which really add spice to that performance right guys again this is jason zack from nathaniel school of music thanks a ton for watching the lesson i will catch you in the next one and before i sign off if you if you haven't already it will be awesome if you could give the video a like hit the subscribe button there's a bell icon for regular notifications we re release videos daily in fact uh, so you don't want to miss anything and uh, on nathanielschool.com you can find more structured courses on these subjects you can also learn with us in person we have proper 6 month curriculum which you could follow at our school and that's about it patreon has some notes of all this stuff which we talked about so do head over there as well and uh, cheers catch you in the next one bye